by a Penske truck. Hey! Here on... We're filming uh, here. It's uh, Rapid Assist Vehicle Penske. It's... Rav. Rav. All right. And I think we're ready to start now. <laughs> the director and writer for Self Portraits or How to Talk Endearingly to Possible Victims. And I am joined here by uh, some fellow cast members. Wilbur Fitzgerald. And Caitlin McPhail. And um, we're here to talk about some of the behind the scenes, you know, kind of inner workings of how the movie was made. Uh, we've gone way back with Wilbur. He's worked on the projects before. He's um, He's won an Emmy for negotiating the tax return deal that brought the film industry to Atlanta. So, kind of a little bit of celebrity. We're uh, very honored to have worked with him in our project. Um, yeah. He uh, he came in in his role. You know, we had like a, an idea that we wanted to work with him for the project. But when we got for the forty-hour film project, school film, it, it really illuminated how we would work with him. Like what his motivation would be as a character, what his demeanor would be. And I think he, uh, I mean, he did a great job of taking that and like playing as like this kind of sinister kind of teacher. Um, yeah. I will just uh, say this, it is upon hearing the two um, things that we had, mockumentary or school movie, uh, I was pretty worried at first just because like, I don't know, those are, those are I don't know, they're just two genres I don't really think about too often, so there was like a part of me that was panicking, like, did we just get the kiss of death? <laughs> Is it already over before we've even started? Yeah. yeah. And um, I think it was really cool how um, after getting those selections, we took a moment to kind of breathe, and then just kind of went right into it um, without any sort of hesitation. Um, and I think that was really good for what we were doing. It really didn't slow us down at all. I think you guys uh, came up with a good concept for this whole thing and it, it which made it easy for me as an actor to just sort of be on the set get an idea about what's going on and then kind of run with it and do a little improvisation which i think always brings a little bit of life to it and spontaneity i'd never worked with these other good actors before but it turns out we had you know a good thing going good chemistry and uh, and you guys of course your experience enough now that you're really, I'd say, you know, up and coming filmmakers, good writers, uh, good, good directors, uh, technical issues we have from time to time. Sometimes the lights go out, sometimes <laughs> the sound goes out. You know, it's just stuff, seriously, just stuff happens and you have to be able to, as you know, you gotta be able to quickly adapt yeah. and make changes because so much of so much of filmmaking, I think I said this to you the other day. So much of filmmaking is solving problems, like that. Some you expect, some you you don't expect. You know, a cast member doesn't show up, so you got to pull somebody else in, or this writing's not working. We got to do something because you got deadlines, and you've got to work fast under tough conditions. And you guys pulled it off masterfully. I think when I hopped on here, I certainly knew the circumstances. Uh, I was familiar with it, though this is my first one. And like, I just kind of knew coming in that like one thing like I would need to do is just like trust that things were gonna work out. Yeah. And also just already ahead of time recognized there was an incredibly high chance of things not going the way that they were gonna be anticipated to go. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think just like with life in general, especially with filmmaking, it's like having that ability to still persevere through circumstances that you don't imagine will be there. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably more important than like, you know, doing things under ideal circumstances. And I thought one thing that really encapsulated that was like the scene where, you know, 
multiple bottles were thrown at yeah. me. We literally had one shot at that. Yeah, I, I don't really, I don't really do takes all that often where it's like we literally have to get this shot or we're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I feel like your initial instinct could be like, oh man, I don't want to mess this up. God, what if this goes wrong? Gosh, what if this goes wrong? But I just remember like once like we were ready to do it, I was fully like, this is gonna go fine. Yeah. I think it's kind of ironic and uh, meta that you're talking about this right now. Yeah. We're having these having, uh, having life problems. Life look, problems. I, look, I've been on, <laughs> I've been on sets before where stuff actually fell on me. I was not seriously injured, but I mean, professional stuff just stuff just happens. Yeah. And and so much of this business is is problem solving. You're gonna do an outside shot. Suddenly, suddenly, you sort of get like unexpected bad weather. You got to do a cover set. You got to, you got to shift gears. You guys have figured out how to do that. It's great. Yeah, Thank I'd you. like to second that because this is my first time working with all of you for a film, and especially with the constraints of forty-eight hours and the nature yeah. of film problem solving, creative problem solving. I, I really appreciate how when things you know, weren't perfect, or you have to switch gears all of a sudden, or change lights all of a sudden, I never felt like stress overwhelmed you, or stress then came on to us. I feel like you were just like, okay, let's go. Okay, we'll change that. Okay, let's keep going. And it was really nice as an actor to be in an environment like that, yeah. where yeah. it's still just seamless. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's a good, it's a good conception, because like so much of filmmaking already inherently has like, an improvised sense to it, and how you just got to deal with things and overcome them as they arise in all aspects: pre-production, production, post-production, post acting, every every facet, yeah. every department. So you know, and I, was, I like to see like how everything works together, and this is kind of generally how the creative process works. For that, what the the real artistry is in how you overcome those problems manifesting something unseen that you would have never expected that yeah. is more natural to the situation because it came as a response to yeah. already and sometimes you will discover something even better that you hadn't planned on. Yeah. I'll tell you one quick one quick story in my experience and um, so a few years ago I worked with Clint Eastwood he directed a movie called Sully here in Atlanta mm -hmm. so I had a role in there and Everything's very quiet, very calm, very organized on a Clint Eastwood set, as you might imagine. So there was a scene, and this kind of well-known actor, um, the scene was with him, and I won't mention any of the names. Anyway, it was, a, it was an important scene in the movie. And uh, I knew who this actor was, and it was obvious during rehearsal he was either nervous or he wasn't fully prepared with his lines, okay? So, Clint Eastwood, who starts a scene by saying something like, not action, he says, okay, you can go, or anytime now. That's how he starts a scene, very calm. And so he started this act, he said, okay, you can go, and the actor started doing his thing, and it was obvious he didn't have his lines down. So, rather than stop the scene, um, Eastwood, just kind of let it go on and let the guy just keep going until he came up with enough that Eastwood knew that he had what he needed and he said, okay, you can stop now. Right, so allowing like the actors to find and create what they think works. Right. In the yeah, without, without crazy pressure, but, it was, but, but you could see what he was doing. He was just letting the guy just go on and on until Eastwood knew, he said, Eastwood knew, you could tell, he had what he needed, and he said, okay, you can stop now. Right. Yeah, so. I, like, I like that mentality of, like, you know, when you, the letting the actors, you know, come up with it. Like, they, they already yeah. know the base, like, in improv, and you've done this for so I'm sure you know this, but, like, they want you to build the stage. Not literally. <laughs> they want you to build the stage, yeah. get the scene set on. Yeah. Um, where, like, the relationships, the characters, motivations, everything, yeah. and then work from there. And in film... You already have the stage laid out for the characters, so you just you get to let them run free, 
and do the fun part of improvising, which is the, the kind of theatrics, the kind of taking elements that you already have and building that's something right. new out of them yeah. without having to do the harder work of having to set things up because that's what everything else I've been writing yeah. is for. And, and you realize that um, this whole process, you're part of the team. It's not just an actor who's doing his thing or her thing. You know, you're all, you're all working together to make something happen. Yeah, what this film really taught uh, me is that you can't make a film, uh, especially with that timeline, without us having help. Yeah, ACs, PAs, the whole crew was needed and invaluable. Yes, it makes a huge difference. It's very collaborative. Everyone is such a contribution. It doesn't get done without everyone. Behind the scenes, in front of the camera, all of it. Ronan, so now that you've done behind the scenes with assisting Dean on the camera, and before you've done acting in front of the camera, do you have a preference of what you'd like to do moving forward? Yeah, so I don't really like dislike acting, but I kind of prefer like doing behind the camera stuff or helping like PAs like set up scenes over acting. Yeah. Because it's just kind of like I just kind of like uh, feel like I'm like better at doing that than acting personally. Acting was always like a little bit challenging for me, like getting like emotions or like the kind of like the facial expression, right? Yeah. Well, I know from what Dean, you've said, he was a major help on this. Yes, yeah, major help. He made, he made it go so much smoother and faster, keeping all the lenses in order, uh, making sure I had the right lens when I asked for it, helping me move all the camera equipment around. Just, it was a great help. And, and that's what you guys have, I think, figured out. It's like, okay, this is a team, and if Wilbur wants to add some stuff here and go on and do something, fine, that's, that's great. We may use it, we may not use yeah. it. I think a good example of that's in the film where you have the line where um, Leslie, who played um, Amy Moeller in the film, and she asks, who are you? And say, I am what I am what I am. But then you added the Latin bit there, which I think that was a really nice touch to your character, kind of like a more teacherly kind of thing to put in there, like you'd be more knowledgeable about that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that's, that's kind of uh, an element where it's a, like, you know, that kind yeah. of improvisation and additions to the scene adds more nuance and flavor to it. And, you know, yeah. I, like, I like to see that process happening. And yeah, yeah, you're, it, you're, 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 letting your, you're letting your actors bring something to it that is not necessarily in the script, but it might add something might yeah. not, but right. but at least it's that freedom, it's that creative freedom to try something. That's yeah. important. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I also think it speaks to you and, and the team choosing who to be in your productions and trusting that you have a team that's going to collaborate and have right. good ideas and be professional and, and um, create that space for all of us to just kind of dive in and be right. in that level with each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's trust. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, the song, which was a big part of the film, um, you came up with the lyrics. Yeah, so uh, I wrote the song, yes. and then after I wrote the lyrics, I went to uh, our singer, uh, Amelia Anderson. She can't be with us today, unfortunately, but I worked with her on the lyrics, and then she restructured them to how she wanted to sing them. And then we got the recording, and then we brought in uh, Zoo. Uh, they're a band. Uh, it's Mateo and uh, what's the other guy's name? Um, Andrew Weaver. Mateo and Andrew Weaver. They're the members <laughs> of it right now, and they helped mix the song. Okay. So, uh, I also composed the tracks. So I had written the lyrics, I got the recording of it, and then I made the music around uh, the lyrics. I already had a simple chord I wanted to play. But I modified it and added other tracks once I had the, the, the audio recording of her voice. Mm -hmm. And then Zoo came in and I produced it with them and we mixed it. And we did that all uh, during the 48 hour film project on the side, which was really fun. Um, and it worked really well in the, uh, in the movie. The lyrics were really informed, like, the, like uh, what you were just saying, the characters' uh, intent and uh, emotions. I can see my thoughts spiral out I'm an image of or from me I am me stained with memory The end project, and I'm really excited for you guys to see it, 
it, it's amazing and it's not it's not really entirely what we thought it was going to be in the first place it's got this own kind of aesthetic that kind of yeah. evolved as it went on yeah but it's you know, it's kind of what it's all about, especially for the 48-hour film project. And yeah. I'm, you know, I'm proud of um, what it is. So what was it like uh, for you working under a tight deadline? So this isn't exactly the first time we've worked with a deadline, but it's the tightest deadline we've had to work on on a project of this magnitude. Uh, last year, we worked in a 24-hour film, uh, film festival for um, something out of uh, Michigan. Mm -hmm. It was fun. It wasn't anywhere near as intensive as this. It was more of like a silent film kind of art project thing without too much of a narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, this project for constructing something much more ambitious with all these sets and characters and emotions and kind of different rooms was difficult. It was a very uh, good learning experience. I think some key takeaways from it, some things you've already mentioned, you know, it's a collaborative process. This was uh, the largest team that I've worked with uh, for, on the crew side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was really, really good to see, like, you know, how well everyone worked together and to kind of understand how much of it was like being able to trust in your fellow uh, cast members to say, hey, I need this done. And then they'll go and get it done while you're able to work on something else. And if everyone's just always working on something, you're just ex exponentially saving time and uh, allowing decisions to be made. So being able to experience that firsthand on a larger scale was uh, a very informative learning experience. I think some other things that uh, I took away from the 4-Hour Film Project was you know, the importance of lighting. Um, mm -hmm. Because generally we'll do scenes with more naturalistic lighting, which was a very stylized mm -hmm. film. And I think the, the setup times between each scene were, you know, they were a little, they were a bit long, but they were essential. And mm -hmm. I think it really helped to understand the process technically mm -hmm. that goes into the grip yeah. uh, department before each shot. Yeah. And also just in terms of we had new equipment for this, we hadn't worked with before. Um, we had some uh, fancier effects. We mm -hmm. had um, multiple mics and wireless mic rigs, you know, kind of more standard. New stuff, yeah. yeah. more standard professional stuff, but new to us. And I think working with a lot of that equipment for the first time was very informative. Yeah, because you were learning as you, yeah, as you learn, went. Yeah, right? learning how we went as you went. Well, I mean, th this whole thing um, that we're in, this whole business that we're in of movies and TV, it's a visual medium. And I thought when I saw the some of the stuff that you guys done on this, I thought, wow, that lighting is... That's really that's interesting. It's it really it really catches your eyes and and it's like this is pretty imaginative. So it was it was, it was very cool. I'm Grant Bolmar. Uh, I'm Wilbur Fitzgerald. Caitlin McPhail. And we are Big Board Films. And make sure to go watch our new short, Self Portraits or How to Talk Endearingly to Possible Victims. You're gonna love it. <laughs>